Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is three-phase transformers. Our objective is to examine three-phase transformers, electrical devices used to step up, step down, isolate, change the electrical configuration, and phase shift three-phase AC voltage. We'll additionally learn to interpret standard three-phase transformer nomenclature and simplified connection and displacement diagrams. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewer has more than a passing familiarity with single-phase transformers and three-phase AC, as illustrated in the Introduction to Transformers and Introduction to Three-Phase AC Lectures, both available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. In a perfect world, I could just tell you to go watch the Introduction to Transformer Lectures three times, seated at three different angles, and call it good. But I can't because there are some peculiarities about three-phase AC transformers that I need to discuss, especially when it comes to connection diagrams. This being said, for the most part, everything I said in the previous lecture on single-phase transformers remains true. You'll recall a transformer is an electrical device used to step up, step down, and isolate primary and secondary voltage via electromagnetic induction. As you are no doubt aware, if a transformer has one turn in the primary for every two turns in the secondary, voltage at the secondary will be stepped up such that it has twice the voltage of the primary. Consider three independent one to two step up single phase transformers, each being fed one line to neutral phase of a light industrial 120 volt line to neutral, 208 volt line to line three phase AC system. 120 volts at zero degrees, 120 volts at negative 120 degrees, and 120 volts at 120 degrees. The secondary outputs would understandably be twice the primary input, yielding 240 volts at an angle of zero degrees, 240 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees, and 240 volts at positive 120 degrees. Conversely, if a transformer has two turns of the primary for every one turn on the secondary, voltage of the secondary will be stepped down such that it will have half the voltage of the primary. Consider three independent two to one step down single phase transformers, each being fed one line to neutral phase of light industrial, 120 volts line to neutral, 208 volt line to line 60 hertz three phase AC system, 120 volts at zero degrees, 120 volts at negative 120 degrees, and 120 volts at positive 120 degrees. The secondary outputs would understandably be half the primary inputs, yielding 60 volts at zero degrees, 60 volts at negative 120 degrees, and 60 volts at positive 120 degrees. You will note that each secondary, regardless of step up or step down configuration, does not induce any phase shift between it and the primary. Secondary output of transformer one remains at zero degrees. Secondary output of transformer two remains at negative 120 degrees. And secondary output of transformer three remains at positive 120 degrees. In summary, the winding to winding magnetic transfer power does not influence phase shift in any way, shape, or form. This fact will remain true for our later discussion of three phase transformers. Although as you'll soon see, how you configure the primary and secondary windings can and does influence phase shift when considered as a whole. Of critical importance for today's discussion on three-phase AC transformers is the location of the phase dots. You'll recall from our previous discussion on transformers, the ends of the winding with the phase dots simultaneously peak in valley. If we were to hook up an AC voltmeter positive to negative across the primary dotted end to non-dotted end, and another AC voltmeter positive to negative across the secondary winding dotted end to non-dotted end, and overlay a plot of instantaneous voltages, we would see the secondary output perfectly in phase with the primary input. If, however, the phase dots were on opposite ends of the secondary winding, effectively using the secondary output backwards or inverted, we could see that the secondary output is perfectly out of phase with the primary input, exhibiting a plus or minus 180 degree shift, such that the secondary output valleys when the primary input peaks and peaks when the primary input valleys. Given your previous experience with single phase AC transformers, these observations about turns ratio and phase dots should be trivial in nature. This being said, up to this point, we're acting as if we're dealing with three isolated independent systems and I haven't hooked them up in any fashion. Since what we're about to get into can get real confusing real quick, let's ditch the step up and step down nature of the transformers and just use one to one isolation transformers. This way we can concentrate some of the cool phase shift properties we're about to observe without getting lost in details about changes in magnitude. Consider three independent single phase transformers with a one to one turns ratio, each being fed one line to neutral phase of a light industrial 120 volt line to neutral, 208 volt line to line 60 hertz three phase AC system. 120 volts at zero degrees, 120 volts at negative 120 degrees, and 100 volts at 120 degrees. The secondary outputs would understandably be the same magnitude, 
fielding 120 volts at an angle of zero degrees, 120 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees, and 120 volts at positive 120 degrees. Given the one-to-one's turns ratio, output remains the same magnitude as input. However, let's continue to call the primary input the high voltage side and the secondary output the low voltage side since it's critical to a later discussion on naming conventions. Now, rather than treating these as three independent systems, let's hook them together. Consider just one of many possible configurations. Since we're feeding each primary line to neutral voltages, one way of arranging the three primary windings is to conjoin each primary winding non-dotted end as the neutral connected central node of a Y configuration. Similarly, one could conjoin the three secondary windings non-dotted ends to form another neutral connected central node of another Y configuration. As one might expect, if each of these now interconnected one-to-one -one transformers were being fed one line to neutral phase of a light industrial three-phase AC system, the secondary outputs would understandably be the same magnitude, yielding 120 volts at zero degrees, 120 volts at negative 120 degrees, and 120 volts at positive 120 degrees. This being said, since we're illustrating each transformer as an individual entity, this diagram might be a little confusing given the overlapping wires. It doesn't clearly illustrate the Y with neutral shape we're going for. For this reason, we might just draw a Y configured high voltage primary and low voltage secondary as such with the understanding high voltage primary winding capital A maps to low voltage secondary winding lowercase a, high voltage primary winding capital B maps to low voltage secondary winding lowercase b, and high voltage primary winding capital C maps to low voltage secondary winding lowercase c. One can clearly visualize the Y shape with neutral now. As aesthetically pleasing as these diagrams may be, they're somewhat cumbersome to illustrate. For this reason, three-phase AC transformers customarily employ what's known as a simplified connection diagram, which looks something like this. Rather than illustrating each winding as a coil, each winding is instead illustrated as a rectangle with a phase dot, clearly indicating which end experiences simultaneous polarity shifts. Additionally, rather than tilting that at eye-pleasing 120 degree angles, the windings are drawn parallel to each other. Imagine bending high voltage primary winding capital A and tilting it till it reaches the horizontal. The same thing for high voltage primary windings capital B and capital C. And the central neutral node is a fourth connection that's brought out to the input side. Similarly, imagine grabbing low voltage secondary winding lowercase a and tilting it till it reaches the horizontal. Same thing for low voltage secondary windings lowercase b and c. And again, the central neutral node is a fourth connection brought out to the output side. High voltage primary winding capital A still maps to low voltage secondary winding lowercase a, b to b, and c to c with no phase shift. Using the simplified connection diagram gets the same point across using far less space and unnecessary complication. You may also see simplified connection diagrams using terminal numbers, capital A1 and A2 for the ends of primary high voltage winding capital A, and lowercase a1 and a2 for the ends of secondary low voltage winding lowercase a. Similar terminal numbers may also be used for the high voltage and low voltage B and C windings. I find these numbers clutter up the diagrams a little much, so I typically just use the capital and lowercase letters, and importantly, clearly they indicate which end of a particular winding has or does not have a phase dot. Given this arrangement of primary and secondary windings, consider the phase shift of the low voltage secondary output with respect to the high voltage primary input. Given light industrial 120 volt line to neutral, 208 volt line to line, 60 hertz, three phase AC, phase one primary input is 120 volts at an angle of zero degrees, and employing a transformer with one to one turns ratio results in low voltage phase one secondary output of 120 volts at an angle of zero degrees. Similarly, low voltage phase two output yields 120 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees, and finally, low voltage phase three output yields 120 volts at an angle of 120 degrees. If we were to draw the phasor diagram for the high voltage input and the low voltage output, they'd be perfect copies of one another. Outputs are in phase with inputs. Configured in this essentially identical manner, this bank of transformers results in no phase shift between the Y configured high voltage primary input and similarly Y configured low voltage secondary outputs. For this reason, this configuration might be referred to as a YN, YN0 three phase AC transformer because the high voltage side is a Y with a neutral. The low voltage side is also a Y with a neutral, and the low voltage secondary output is perfectly in phase with a high voltage primary input with zero degree phase shift. We'll take a look at the details of transformer naming conventions in a moment. 
Given the numerous terminals available on a three-phase transformer, a YN, YN0 configuration is just one of many possible configurations. Consider this subtle modification and its important consequences. Rather than tying together the non-dotted ends of the low-voltage secondary windings, let's instead tie together the dotted ends and use them as the central node of a Y-configured output, effectively using each low-voltage secondary winding backwards or inverted. Used in this fashion, the low-voltage secondary outputs of each transformer will be perfectly out of phase with the high-voltage primary inputs or exhibit a respective plus or minus 180-degree phase shift. When the input peaks, the outputs valley. When the inputs valley, the outputs peak. Long story short, if you're using the secondary backwards, add or subtract 180 degrees from each phase. If high voltage phase one primary input is 120 volts at an angle of zero degrees, low voltage secondary output one would be 120 volts plus or minus 180 degrees. If high voltage phase two primary input is 120 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees, low voltage secondary output two would be 120 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees plus 180 or 120 volts at 60 degrees. Similarly, if high voltage phase three primary input is 120 volts at positive 120 degrees, low voltage secondary output three would be 120 volts at an angle of 120 minus 180 or 120 volts at an angle of negative 60 degrees. If we were to draw the phasor diagram for the high voltage input and low voltage output, each phasor would be the polar opposite of one another, pointing left when they were pointing right, pointing up when they were pointing down, pointing in when they were pointing out. You get my point, totally opposite. Given the low voltage outputs exhibit a 180 degrees shift with respect to the high voltage inputs, you'd think they call this a YN, YN180, but they don't. They call it a YN, YN6, where six means 180 using what is known as clock notation. Like I said, this can get real confusing real quick, so it's probably a good time to introduce clock notation and explain standard three phase transformer naming conventions. Now, because this is an accepted standard that the whole world should use, it doesn't mean everybody does. So be prepared for variations in this theme, straight up incorrect applications of it. Long story short, trust no one, including me, especially me. Always verify the connection diagrams for your specific transformer of interest directly from the manufacturer. The generally accepted three-phase transformer naming convention uses three parts. Part one is the configuration of the high voltage side. Y or delta using capital letters Y or D. Note the dumbest D students in the most broken school systems in the most backward state, Mississippi, I'm looking at you, sometimes call Y configurations star configurations, like a really lame star with only three arms. Do not use the term star. It is a Y. It will always be a Y. It is not a star. It will never be a star. Stop trying to make star happen. Anyways, part two is the configuration of the low voltage side, Y or delta using lowercase letters, Y or D. Similar prohibitions exist on using the loser term star for clearly Y connected low voltage windings. Additionally, if the high voltage or low voltage side when configured as a Y, not a star, has a fourth neutral line, it'll indicate it with an N. Again, capital letters for the high voltage side and lowercase letters for the low voltage side. Additionally, you might run across a Z or a zigzag connection which I'll explain later, or maybe not at all. Finally, part three is the phase shift of the low voltage side with respect to the high voltage side using clock notation. Again, low voltage with respect to the high voltage. Does the low voltage lead or lag the high voltage? The high voltage is the reference. This has important ramifications we'll explore in later example applications. Clock notation necessitates you know how old school analog clocks work. If you've never seen one before, get your grandma to take you to church or bingo or whatever old people do all day, and I'm certain you'll run into one. Anyways, clock notation illustrates the high voltage side using one hand pointed straight up and down at 12 o'clock. After all, it's the reference. And then the low voltage side has another hand that leads or lags it given anti-clockwise rotation. Yeah, you heard me right. Despite using an analog clock face, which are known to rotate clockwise, hence the name, the assumed direction of rotation is counterclockwise. Things counterclockwise of the high voltage reference lead it. Things clockwise of the high voltage reference lag it. For example, the YN, YN0 transformer we examined earlier has no phase shift between the high voltage and low voltage side. So the high voltage hand points straight up 
and the low voltage hand also points straight up, i.e. a zero degree differential between the high voltage and low voltage side. Conversely, the high voltage and low voltage sides of the YN, YN6 transformer we examined earlier are totally out of phase with one another, i.e. pointing in two opposite directions, so the high voltage hand points straight up, again the high voltage is always the reference, it always appears at the top, whereas the low voltage hand points straight down, as would an old school analog clock indicating 6 o'clock, i.e. the opposite side of the clock from 12. If you divide a 360 degree circle into 12 parts, as would an analog clock, you effectively get 30 degree shifts per position, where 1 o'clock indicates the low voltage side lags the high voltage side by 30 degrees, 11 o'clock indicates the low voltage side leads the high voltage side by 30 degrees, 2 o'clock indicates the low voltage side lags the high voltage side by 60 degrees, 10 o'clock indicates the low voltage side leads the high voltage side by 60 degrees, and so on. While we're discussing simplified connection diagrams, phasor diagrams, and clock faces in front of us, it's probably a good idea to introduce displacement diagrams as well. You recall phasor diagrams use the circle with zero degrees on the right hand side and rotate counterclockwise, such that waveforms situated counterclockwise of a given reference waveform are said to lead, whereas waveforms situated clockwise of a given reference waveform are said to lag. You'd think everyone would use the same format as phasors, but they don't. Clock and displacement diagrams still stick with a counterclockwise direction of rotation and the same definitions for leading and lagging, but rather than starting out the zero degree circuit out on the right hand side, they locate zero degrees up the top. It isn't too big of a deal since all you're doing is effectively rotating a regular phasor diagram 90 degrees counterclockwise, but it's still annoying for those that vainly seek consistency and sense in our upside down world. Consider the phasor and displacement diagrams for a YN, YN0 transformer. The phasor diagram for the high voltage side shows all three line to neutral phases, the reference phase one in black pointed at zero degrees on the right hand side. The high voltage displacement diagram, since it's the reference, just rotates this 90 degrees with a reference phase indicated as an arrow pointed straight up. Since the low voltage side of a YN, YN0 configured three phase AC transformer is perfectly in phase with the high voltage side, the low voltage side phaser and displacement diagrams are essential repeats of the high voltage side i.e. the reference phase pointing at zero degrees on the right hand side of the phasor diagram and the reference phase indicated as an arrow pointed straight up and down at the top of the displacement diagram. Like I said, the displacement diagram is essentially a phasor diagram only rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. In contrast, the phasor and displacement diagrams for YN, YN6 transformer look like this. Since it's the reference, the high voltage side still features a displacement diagram with reference phase one illustrated as an arrow pointed straight up. However, since the low voltage side of a YN, YN6 configured three phase transformer is perfectly out of phase with the high voltage side, the low voltage side displacement diagram looks like the phasor diagram where the reference phase one illustrated as an arrow pointed straight down, i.e. at six o'clock. Again, displacement diagrams are essentially just reoriented phasor diagrams. Displacement diagrams for delta configurations, which we'll examine in a moment, use slightly different but a related notation. Consider a DD0 transformer. This nomenclature implies the high voltage side is a delta, as is the low voltage side, and there exists no phase shift between the high voltage and low voltage side. The high voltage side would be illustrated as a triangle, which is essentially the reposition phasers for the line to line voltages stuck end to end, with an arrow indicating the reference line to neutral voltage, even though that neutral may be virtual in nature. For a DD0 transformer, both displacement diagram arrows point straight up because there's no phase shift between the high voltage and low voltage side. Conversely, for a DD6 transformer, the displacement diagram for the high voltage side points straight up, and the displacement diagram for the low voltage side points straight down. You dig? 